Christ May I not forget The blood he shed It is by his death I am alive May I never boast In anything Except the cross Of Jesus Christ Christ. May I not 
spirits like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for your presence here with us this morning. We thank you for, for the oil from heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives and breathes and dwells on the inside of each and one of us. We thank you that it helps us and comforts us in our time of need. And Father, we thank you for your word. Be health and life to us and in keeping of it there is great reward. We thank you for our minister this morning, Father God. We thank you for your hand upon Pastor Colin's life. We thank you for a greater anointing this morning as we draw from the gift. We thank you for the substance here. We thank you for all good things. We receive them by faith in Jesus' name. And all the saints say, Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Pick it up from there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I'm just going to use an example here which I'll refer to a little later. Um, I'm sure all of us will have met people. Uh, maybe, we meet, maybe we meet a family member first or we meet the spouse, the husband, or we meet the wife. We don't meet both. Maybe we meet or we hear about somebody. We've, somebody's told us about somebody. Maybe you've heard about me and never met me before. Never heard me minister before? Maybe, maybe. So there's the situations we get in where we've heard about somebody or something happens and what then happens is we develop a mental perspective, a mental perspective, a mental expectation of what that person might be like, right? It's just natural. I mean, it just happens naturally. So I've met, I've met the husband. Um, I sure would like to meet his wife. I've met her. I'd like to meet him. And so we kind of have this mental perspective or image that this is what they're like. And then it's common for people to say, well, uh, <clears throat> he wasn't at all what I expected, <laughs> right? Or she wasn't at all what I expected. And, you know, maybe you've only ever seen him on TV sitting behind a desk. And, you know, when I met him, my goodness, I didn't realize he was so short. So you've got this expectation that you cultivate. Are we all right? Yeah, so that's all, all normal and all, all natural. Now, since I'm going to use an example here, and I'll use myself, since I can give you an ironclad money-back guarantee that I will not be offended with what you say. If we use you, I can't give an ironclad guarantee that you won't be offended. Okay, so me, what do you see? Just looking at me, what do you see? What do you see? Just looking at me, an expectation you may have. Um, so, what do you see? What's what what what's my what would you say my my hair colour used to be? Red. Okay, I'm a redhead. So, what would you what would you say my family tree or my lineage comprises? Anybody? What were you saying? Irish, Scottish, Scottish, anybody else? The Irish have red hair too, so so what's my lineage? What's my family tree? To? What do I look like? I look like I was born amongst the Eskimos? No. Okay. So my lineage then is my, my father was full Scotch. My grandfather, his family, emigrated out from Scotland many years ago, so they were full Scotch. On my mother's side, mother's side, he was an Englishman, and she was a dark-skinned, brown-eyed Irish girl. So there you go, Betty. I've got, I'll, I'll be in with you. We'll be good friends now. So I've got a little, half Scotch, quarter English, quarter Irish. Okay, how tall would I be? Oh, uh, 5'10", in advance I'm 5'10", 5'10", 5'10", 5'11", yeah, so just under six foot, right? 
Okay. Now, um, would you say I was in shape? Would you say I'm in good shape? Would you say I'm overweight? No, underweight? So, you got to be careful what you say because I, I could be setting you up here. Because I get told all the time, oh, Pastor Colin, you're looking skinny. And so I say to them, do I have the right of reply to that? <laughs> oh, yes, Pastor Colin. Well, let me inform you. I am the same weight as I was 48 years ago the day that I got married. Can you say that? <laughs> Are you able to say that? Well, then leave me alone. See, so you can see, you, can, you, you perceive, you gain information about me. And we do that all the time. You know, we've had people, they've told me, people come to this church, been planted in this church, whatever, and they said, oh, Pastor Colin, when we were going to come, our family told us, oh, don't go there. Stay with the brown skins. Why? Because they got a skinny Pakia fella there, right? <laughs> so we were told that. Don't come here. Okay. Anyways, we will come back to that, okay? Go with me, if you would, to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. My goodness. I, I better not get sidetracked here. Now, I'm going to ask you a question quickly as we go to John chapter 1. When you got born again, Okay, we use the term born again, we use the term saved. Tell me about your salvation experience. Tell me when you received Jesus. Tell me when Jesus came into your life. All terms describing the same thing or the same moment when you got born again. So the moment you got born again, what happened to you? Now, I'm not talking about, well, Pastor Colin, I cried for three days. I'm not talking about that. I felt this wonderful weight lift off me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about from here, Bible facts, when you get born again, what happened to you? What happened to you? Okay, so, Mike over here, uh, you become a new creation. Can you give me the scripture? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. That's the reference. If any man be in Christ, becomes a new creation. Old things pass away so you can put up there a new creation are we gonna we're we gonna got where's the where's the where's the i teed up these girls to do this and uh, they're not on the job so we're going to use this as a whiteboard so you become a new creation right so any man be in christ he or she is a new creature old things pass away behold all things become new all right what else might happen when you got born again at that moment Okay, you receive the Holy Spirit. That's a good, a, good, um, a good thing to note there. So you receive the Holy Spirit because in Romans it says if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you're not his. So when you get born again, yeah, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. Romans chapter 8. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you're none of his. Okay, so there's a couple of good things. You become a new creature, okay, and um, you receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, anything else that happens? New in Christ, okay, so new creatures, that comes under that one, the new creatures, any man be in Christ. We're transferred, okay, so we change kingdoms, okay, very good. What else happens when you get saved? Names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, okay. I don't, Greg? Hey? Experience peace. You see differently? Talk differently. Well, you're supposed to, yes. <laughs> but what about you become a child of God? Yes. Isn't that one? You become a child of God. John chapter 1. As many as received him, to them he gave the power to become sons and daughters of God. So you come into the family of God. He becomes your father. You're now in the family of God. 
John chapter 1. Anything else? Okay, eternal life. You receive the gift of eternal life with God. You're going to live forever anyway, but it's just a matter of where. Because spirits don't die. So yes, you will live forever, but it's just your choice as to where that will be. So there's a whole bunch of things that happen um, when we get born again. Okay, now, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. So the verse I just mentioned in verse 12, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. The power, the right to be in the family of God. But look down at verse 16. In that context, verse 16. Of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Of his fullness we have all received. Say those words, his fullness. Now in Ephesians chapter 3, we'll just mention that one. There are other references, but um, Ephesians chapter 3, we'll just mention that one. Paul prayed for believers, and this is important. He prayed in Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 19, part of that prayer is praying that you would know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge and that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So of his fullness we have all received. Um, uh, some translations use the word abundance there. Of his abundance we have all received. All received. Now, as we had the answer from over here, what happens when you get born again is you are shifted out of one kingdom and you're placed into another one. Okay, so I want to give you the scripture on that. Colossians, please. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. A change of kingdoms happens, a change of address happens when you get born again. So, Colossians 1 coming in at verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now look at verse 13. He has delivered us. He's what? He has, delivered us. has delivered us. See, when you're in Christ, you're born again, he delivers you, delivers you, shifts you out of, delivers you, shifts you out of the power of darkness and transfers or conveys you into the kingdom of the son of his love. Now here's a couple of other translations amplified. Out of the control and the dominion of darkness. Praise God. You're shifted out of the control and the dominion, the domain of darkness. Woost translation, who delivered us out of the tyrannical rule of the darkness. So when you got born again, my brother, my sister, you were shifted out of the kingdom of darkness and you were moved over to and placed in the kingdom of the son of his love. A change of kingdoms took place. Now the sad thing is that many Christians live their life, they love Jesus and do their best, but they're totally unaware that when they got born again, a change of kingdoms took place. So over here, if I can use this side, I'm not talking about you people, I'm talking about this side to illustrate. Let's say this is the kingdom of darkness, the kings, the kings, kingdoms of darkness, the kingdoms of this world. And over here, this is the kingdom of light. Kings, the kingdom of light over here. Help me, Jesus. Excuse me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help us, help us, help us. You did not begin your journey as you, as a human person. You did not begin your journey as who you are, you, in God's sight, here in this kingdom. 
when your mum and dad got together that morning, that night, that afternoon, whatever, and he sowed his seed into your mother that met her egg, that's not when your journey began. You need to get that. You need to get that. That is not when your journey began. Read your Bible. Your journey actually began over here in the heart of God. That's where your journey began. Here. Can I give you some scripture? I'm glad you asked. Jeremiah. God spoke to Jeremiah and said, Son, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you, this event over here ever happened, Jeremiah, before that ever happened, over here I knew you and I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Paul said the same thing. Different words, but very much the same thing. So I was tagged before I was in my mother's womb. Two examples there. Jeremiah and Saul of Tarsus, Paul the Apostle. But if that's not enough, in Ephesians chapter 1 says this, just, oh, come on, somebody. Come with me, come with me. I'm trying to get you to a good place. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Wow. You didn't begin over here. You began over here in the heart of God, chosen in him before the foundation of the world. If God can say that to Jeremiah, God is no respecter of persons. He can say the same thing to you. Before you're in your mother's womb, Colin, I knew you. Before you're in your mother's womb, Barry, I knew you. So we're born over here, the man, the woman, in this fallen world. Here we are over here in darkness, stumbling around, fear, hatred, bitterness, scratching each other's eyes out. We hear the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are translated out of this mess and we come over here where we belong where we belong we're back home we're back home this is where I came from I'm back home this kingdom over here is temporary this one over here is eternal it's where I belong now let me show you a scripture here I want to be real practical and help you as much as I can in the time that we have Second Chronicle, Second Corinthians, sorry, chapter five, and we've already quoted verse seventeen. If anyone be in Christ, but look at verse sixteen. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse sixteen. Therefore, everybody say therefore. therefore. From now on, we regard. He's talking to believers. Talking to new creations, he's talking to kingdom people. From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus way no long, that way no longer. Over here, listen, over here, we know one another after the flesh. That's the world system over here. Oh. She's real curvy, eh? Man, she's good looking. But let me remind you, the models of today will not be the models of next year. Models, beauty models, beauty queens. This is temporary. The kings, the kingdoms, the cultures of this world are temporary. Actually, we used to sing that song. She's come back to me. Um, Richard and Elma, um, we used to sing a song. Peter, you'll know the song. Um, yeah, um, is there something about... There's something about that name. I think that, you know, the kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Let's do that again. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something 
about that name. That's over here. Kings and kingdoms and cultures over here will all pass away. They're temporary. But when you get born again, you're back where you came from and back where you belong. So he says, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. How are you doing with that? See, the illustration that I used at the beginning, tell me about me, what do I look like, what, how tall am I, I'm overweight, under, whatever, that's knowing people after the flesh. That's what I am over here in this kingdom. But come on, what you have to figure out is who am I over here? Yes. With me? Yes. Who am I over here? That stuff has got nothing to do with what you are over here. Are we all right? Yes. I'm a new creature. Ha! Huh. Praise the Lord. I'm a son. Yes. Washed. Not guilty. So, let me... My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. If we could just get people to live this verse 16, it would transform the body of Christ. Trust me, I've been on the receiving end of vicious tongues many times. But if we could get, just get people to live that, it would transform the body of Christ. Now, in your Bible, in the New Testament, we'll just concentrate on the Apostle Paul especially, the word brother, the word brother. Everybody say brother. brother. And then the word brethren, say brethren. brethren. Okay, in Paul's writings, from Romans through to Philemon, he uses the word brother 33 times in the New King James Version. Brother, 33 times. In Paul's writing. The word brethren from Romans through 2 Timothy, he uses the word brethren 101 times. Same Greek word. Same Greek word translated brother, translated brethren. 134 times the Apostle Paul uses it. James uses it, Peter uses it, and John uses it. Okay, the word brother or the word brethren. Okay, so it's a very strong biblical word. I'll give you one example. We're not going to do all 140 or whatever, okay? So just relax. So 1 John chapter 3. And it's used here four times in a couple of verses. Brother. Somebody's phone's going off. Okay, so 1 John chapter 3. Do not marvel, my brethren, verse 13. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. Okay, so that's normal, all right? That's normal. If you're living a, believe, you know, a, a life that honors God, people will hate you. That's normal. Now, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. There's the word there, brethren. That's the Greek word there, brethren. Who does not love his brother? That's the second time it's used. Translated brother, abides in death. Whoever hates his brother, there it is, number three, is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Next verse 16, by this we know we love because we lay, he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So there it is four times. Same word, Greek word, brother, brethren. Now listen, the literal meaning of that word is this, from the same womb. From the same womb. So we use that term born again, you're born again, I'm born again, we're born into the family of God. We have been birthed through the same womb. Spiritual rebirth, I don't have time to go into the scriptures, there's plenty there, it talks about being born of God, uh, born, we're born again by the word and by the spirit in here born again, change in here new nature, life and nature of God, so we're born again so that means Kit, you and I are full brothers I'm not your half brother, I'm your full brother I'm your full brother, I'm not your half brother I'm not your quarter brother, I'm not your distant cousin bro we're full brothers, full sisters. You understand what I'm trying to say to you, what I'm trying to get across to you? 
So you've got South African background, right? Okay, I'm your full brother. You're my full sister. And it's time we started treating one another that way. And that's what this is talking about, not knowing one another after the flesh. Well, he's this, she's that, he's this, he's that, he's short, he's tall, he's skinny, he's overweight. That's all what they do in this world, over here in this kingdom. But over here, we know one another, we are full family. I'm your full brother. Okay, You're my full sister. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we should know one another. But then it's not, listen, 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 listen. Paul said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So over here in this kingdom, oh, my, 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 my. Don't they have a gorgeous earthen vessel? Oh, my, 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 my. Look at what he's done with his earthen vessel in the gym. Oh, my goodness. See the six pack. Oh, my goodness. The earthen vessel. We magnify the earthen vessel. The gold medal in this kingdom goes to physical beauty. But it's temporary. Over here in this kingdom, we ask ourselves, what did the earthen vessel carry? What do I carry, my brother, my sister? What do I carry? Who am I in God? Forget the earthen vessel. You get what you get. But the treasure, the treasure, come on somebody, the treasure is what you should be accessing. My, 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 my earthen vessel can't help you. My bride fell in love with me 48 years ago. My vessel can't help you. But I just may carry something that can bring liberty to you and loose the shackles off you. I just may carry something of eternity in here. But we magnify the earthen vessel. Oh, my goodness. Such a beautiful flowing hair. Such wonderful eyes to look into. What about the treasure? Yeah, let's get our focus where it should be. Are we all right? Yes. Do we need to have a popcorn break? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> last Sunday, because I'm up in abundant life, and by the way, they didn't want to let me go, so I had to break free to get down here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the popcorn break, so since I'm not known there as well as, up there as well as I'm not known well, but not as well as here, so... Um, I shot in on Saturday and bought a big bag of, bag of popcorn, you see. So I turned up on Sunday and I said, now, if you're one of these people that needs a, you know, you can't concentrate for more than 10 minutes and you need a popcorn break, God has heard your prayer. And I heard, held up the bag of popcorn. <laughs> so, so I said to them, if it gets a little rough going for you, we'll pass the popcorn, okay? But if it gets a little rough for me, I'll eat the popcorn, okay? So. But anyway, they passed it all around, passed the bag around, <laughs> had a popcorn break. But I'm sorry I didn't bring the popcorn, okay? But I want you to see something. You've been here in the life of this church. You've probably been here before. Mark chapter 6, very quickly. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Gospel of Mark. Okay, chapter 6, verse 1. He went out, that's Jesus from there, came to his own country and the disciples followed him. Listen, this is a graphic illustration of what we've been talking about. So follow it, follow it in your Bible. He went out from there and came to his own country and the disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? that such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joses, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Let me just read that again. Um, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, 
the brother of James, Joses, Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us, so they were offended at him. What's that? Very good. That's knowing the preacher after the flesh. Oh, we know him. Who do you think he is? Grew up here. Went to kindy with my little ones. You know, played in the soccer team with, with Mana. Played, did this, did that. We know the family. That's knowing him after the flesh. Are you here? How serious is that, I wonder? Well, just keep reading and we'll find out. Are not his sisters here with us? So they're offended at him. And he said to them, verse 4, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and among his own relatives and in his own house. And he could not. And he could do no mighty works there. It's not that he would not, but that he could not. They recognized him, but after the flesh. Exactly what Second Corinthians five sixteen tells us not to do. They recognized him after the flesh. Who do you think he is? His dad built our kitchen table. We know the family, known them for generations. Same chapter, my brother, my sister, same chapter. Same gospel writer. Same preacher. Everybody say that with me, same chapter. Same, chapter. same gospel writer. Same, gospel writer. Same, preacher. same preacher. Go to the end of the chapter. Coming at verse 53, when they'd crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret, and anchored there. And when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognized them. Oh. This bunch recognized them too. They recognized them at the beginning of the chapter. This bunch recognized them too. They recognized him. Immediately the people recognized him. And so they ran through the whole surrounding region and began to carry about on beds those who were sick to wherever they heard he was, wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched him were made well. Both crowds recognized him. Same preacher, same gospel writer, same chapter. Over here they recognized him. After the flesh, he could do no mighty works. Over here, they must have seen through different eyes. Come on, over here you've got the flesh, but over here, what do you carry? He carries a healing anointing. Quick, get the sick in here. Race throughout the whole region, bringing people in, blah, 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 blah. And not a matter of could not, I mean just people touch them, getting healed. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Both crowds recognized them, my brother, my sister. Didn't they? Didn't they? I said, didn't they? So what do you see? So you're, you're in this kingdom and you're exhorted. We walk by faith, not by sight, but we don't know people after the flesh. Over here, you're my full brother, not a distant cousin bro. You're my full brother in Christ. We're born from the same womb. Is that good? Yes. This is this book here. Yeah. Now, I mentioned before about the two kingdoms. We're asking what happened when we get born again of his fullness we've all received. Shouldn't we explore that a little while we're in this life? The fullness. The overflow from Jesus. Well, we shifted out of one kingdom into another. We've just talked about that. But here's one nobody got, nobody mentioned. Which means nobody's really aware of it or forgotten it. But the Bible also says that when you're in Christ, he makes us kings and priests unto our God. He makes us kings 
and priests unto our God. That's something that happens. So since you're a king and a priest, how are you doing? Are you fulfilling your ministry? I didn't know about it. Well, it's part of the fullness that we've received. Shouldn't we at least look at it? Explore it? Find out about it if it's talking about us? Or we just wait till we get to heaven? Hey, I'm trying real hard. We doing right? Ah. First Peter chapter two. I'll just give you a couple of scriptures. That just sounds like me, doesn't it? We've got to wrap the scripture around everything. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's not in the book. Don't listen to it. And this is the age to Apostle Peter. I mean, this boy's got a CV. Oh, has he got a CV? My goodness. And here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he says, But you, 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 are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness. He tore us out of that kingdom of darkness and got us over into the kingdom of his marvelous light. You, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Wow, you, royal priesthood, holy nation. Does that mean anything to you? Yes. My goodness. Don't ask me to preach on that. We'll still be here at three o'clock. I'll give you another scripture. Eh? The prayers of the saints coming up before the throne. Revelation chapter 5. The prayers of the saints coming up before the throne. The prayers of the saints. Verse 8 there, you've got the prayers of the saints. What's happening there? And it says that this is the prayer of the saints. And they, the saints, sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. No, there's no two doubts about who this is talking about. That's us. We've been redeemed to God by his blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And look here, you've made us kings and priests unto our God. We're a royal priesthood. How am I doing for time? Anybody have to go and deliver a baby or anything like that or about to have a baby? Probably got a midwife. I, I can look after you if you're going to have a baby. No problems. I do hundreds of lambs all the time and calves and stuff, so <laughs> you'll be fine. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me try and get something across to you. The Old Testament you'll read about throughout the history about the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood. So you've got the high priest was from the family of Aaron, tribe of Levi, but Aaron. They call that the Aaronic, Aaron, Aaronic priesthood, and then the Levites. And they had the mantle, they had the boundaries of being the priests in Old Testament Israel. But they were not royal priests. They had the priesthood, the tribe of Aaron, tribe of Levi, the high priests, and they served the people of Israel for the Lord in that priestly role but then Jesus comes on the scene and we find out in the book of Hebrews that yes Jesus is our great high priest yes he is a priest but he's not from the house of Levi he's not of the order of Levi Hebrews will tell you that Jesus is from the order of Melchizedek now Melchizedek who was he Melchizedek, it says, was the king of Salem, which we now know as Jerusalem. The king of Salem, Melchizedek, but it says he was a king of Salem and priest of the Most High God. So he was both king 
and priests. And when Abraham came back from his, uh, you know, uh, with, the, with the spoils of war, Melchizedek came out to meet him and Abraham gave him offerings and tithes from the spoils of war. Melchizedek, an eternal priesthood, the Bible says. So Jesus is not from the house of Levi. He's from the order of Melchizedek, which is an eternal priesthood, which is a royal priesthood, both king and priest. Do you see it? Levi were not kings. Their kings came from the tribe of Judah. So we've got the Levitical priesthood, regular priests, but we've got Jesus from the order of Melchizedek, king and priest. Well, the Bible says we're in Christ. We're not in Levi. We're in Christ. And Christ has an eternal priesthood. So therefore, in Christ, we're both kings and priests. Does that help you at all or just clarify a few bits and pieces for you? An eternal priesthood. So of the fullness that we've received, this is part of it. Can I tell you? Two of my preferred Pronouns are king and priest. <laughs> We're kings and priests unto our God. Wow. What do kings do very quickly? They carry authority and they can use that influence either positive or negative, but they carry authority. They serve justice. They make provision. They defend righteousness. They see that the house of the Lord is cared for, catered for, provided for. They make provision. See that worship is happening. They lead in times of war. So there's just a little job description for you. We are right? Come on, come on, come on. Of his fullness we have all received. This is part of it. Shouldn't we explore it in this life? Or should we just wait till we get to heaven or spend the first 100,000 years in spiritual kindergarten learning what we should have learned here? Are we all right? So kings are just, so you get that, they carry an authority. They can use that influence, positive or negative. They serve justice. They make provision. They provision for the house of the Lord, for worship. They defend righteousness. It's just a little brief thing. I'm not saying it's exhaustive. But here's the, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the catch. It's exciting. Very often, very often, we get all wound up about the um, privileges of something. Do your kids have privileges in your family? How many do you have? Four, your four children have privileges with you that I don't have. My four have privileges with me that you don't have. Okay? Just as there are kids. So we like the privileges, or oh, the privileges of being a king. Wow, I get to throw my weight around. No, not exactly. But we like the privileges of being a child of God. But nobody gets so excited when you start talking about the responsibilities that go with that. So yes, in Christ you're a king, but listen, in the kingdom, to be able to exercise that authority now, you have to first be under authority. And if you're not under authority, you will struggle to be able to exercise any authority because that's the kingdom over here. Over here in this world, if you're a king, you have a title, I mean, you can rule by fear. Over here, look at North Korea. You oppose them, they'll do something horrible to you. Put you in front of a rocket launcher or whatever. Let a whole bunch of hungry dogs loose on you, lions with our forefathers in Rome. You can rule by fear. But over here, this is not a kingdom of fear, this is a kingdom of love. 
and to exercise authority over here, you've got to be under authority, which entitles you then to exercise authority. Is that all right? And we struggle with the under bit, eh? There's just something from the old nature here, right? We zip it up in a suitcase and sort of bring it with us just in case we're going to need it over here, right? <laughs> Telling me what to do, bless God. We bring that with us in a little bag behind our back from this kingdom over here. But if you want to be able to exercise authority, you've got to be under authority. Everybody go like this. Okay, so quickly, just to wrap it up, priests, priests get to serve. They serve at the altars of God. Sacrifices, you know the story well. Jesus served at the altars of heaven on our behalf. They serve from God to the people and from the people to God. <sighs> and family, we need a balance of both. You get out of one way out there in La La Land, you're going to get out of balance and get in a false doctrine. You get on the other one, we need a balance of both. I'm a king, but I'm also a priest. Just because you're a king doesn't mean you don't get to serve. Are we all right? Have we done all right? You know what? I'm trying my best, I know that. <laughs> So you think about the priests, my brother, my sister. You're born in the tribe of Levi. You had privileges. Oh, my, 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 my. You had privileges. Didn't they? You're from the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Naphtali. There's a piece of ground marked off that you're not allowed in. Sorry. Sorry. You try to cross that line, you'll probably die if you're from the wrong tribe. But if you're from Levi, you get the privilege of being able to work in close with the presence. Don't you? Wow. What if you're from Asher and you want to come and have a look? You can't. You don't have that privilege, wrong tribe. But if you're from Levi, you get to handle the sacrifices. You get to handle the holy things. You get to be in close, close, closer, closer to the presence. What a privilege. The responsibility? Maybe, maybe I should keep that for next time. You've got to live right or it might kill you. That's a responsibility. I'm talking about the old covenant. Listen, when the high priest, you may not know this, the high priest went into the presence of the Lord, the very presence once a year, day of atonement, they put a rope on that boy on his ankle, a long rope, okay, and it had a bell ringing on the bottom there. And when he went into that, behind that curtain here, behind that veil, there's a long rope trailing there. What did they have that rope for? In case he didn't do it right, he died in there. Well, how are you going to get him out of there? You pull on the rope and pull him out. Nobody's going to volunteer to go in there and get him, right? You pull him out. If the bell stops ringing, we're in deep yogurt. That's the Old Testament. So, oh, what a privilege to see the Shekinah glory. David brought that ark up. He pitched his little tent over it. That worship went on 24-7 for something like 36 years. And they stood around that blue flame, the priesthood, close to the presence. But the other tribes couldn't come in. But they had to live right. We won't go there. They had to live right. And our Bible tells us that there's a new and living way. The veil has been ripped and we can come boldly as that song was saying into the presence but we've got to live right are we here are we here so of his fullness we've all received we've been made kings and priests unto our God 
There are such exciting days ahead. My, 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 my. Such exciting days ahead. Oh. So what have we talked about this morning? Well, we talked about of his fullness we have all received. Should we not explore that? Absolutely. We're translated out of the temporary kingdoms of this world, so we've got to stop thinking like we're still here. Stop seeing people like we're still here. Stop acting like we're still here. That's all temporary. We're over here. This is an eternal kingdom and an eternal culture over here. This is where we belong. And so we start seeing one another after the spirit. We start seeing one another as being from the same womb. Sure, we have our differences. Listen, we don't compete we complement and complete. There's only one of you, only one of me. So we don't, we imitate the faith walk. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. But we're not in competition with one another. I'm not trying to be you, you shouldn't try to be me. But what you carry complements what I carry. What you carry all of us together, it brings something to completion. You with me? So it's not a competition. We compete with one another. He's better than this. She's better than... No, 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 no. We complement. We complete. We need a supply of what you carry. A supply of what I carry. Are we all right? Yeah, how about we stand up? Kings of the Lord, stand up. Priests of the Lord, stand up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have you been edified this morning? The word been good, washed over you? Hallelujah, of his fullness. We have all received grace upon grace. The grace upon grace, we didn't deserve it. We didn't, we didn't audition for it. We didn't do a job interview for it. God didn't read our CV and get real impressed about it. No, of his fullness, we have received. So those things we talked about, I'm in the family, I'm a son, I'm a daughter of God. I'm a new creature, old things have passed away. I'm in a new kingdom now, an eternal kingdom. God is my father. Oh, my, 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 that would be enough just to rescue me from hell and get me to heaven, but he's made me a king and a priest hallelujah hallelujah what an honour what a privilege they had to be the tribe of Levi what a privilege we have to be priests unto the Lord today what a privilege we have just you will be fine John just you what a privilege amen let's let's stop all the fighting and the fussing and the bickering and the blah, blah, blah that happens in this kingdom over here.